So in this age of, uh, you know, 140 characters and Twitter and Facebook, and uh, we all get a lot of uh, quick insights into thousands of years of wisdom. <laughs> and it goes a little something like this, right? Be the change, right? This is a beautiful thing, super vague and it, a subjective, and that's why it sticks with a lot of people. It doesn't say how, it just says do. It doesn't say what, it just says something. Be the change. We got a lot of this. You can dream it, you can do it. Believe it. Manifest your dreams. You are the creator of your own destiny. Make something, right? Do something. Do something good. Do small things with great love. You can do it. Yes, you can. Make something happen. We can do it. You can do anything. Change your world. Don't wish for it. Work for it. Manifest anything you desire. We create our own reality. These are all beautiful things, but they're all partial <coughs> truths. They don't have the fullness of it. They don't tell us how, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today, how. Well, and then Biggie shows up and he's like, what? You can't change the world unless you change yourselves. And he kind of throws a wrench in that thing because <laughs> everybody's got an idea how you can change it. You know, a lot of people have said this over the years, but I like this one because, uh, you know, respect for Biggie. Uh, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make the change. So we're doing, right now that be the change we want to see, we're bringing that a mirror up to ourselves, right? And the hippies knew this, right? You change the world when you change your own mind. You can do it. See, play day, right? So the hippies said, turn on, tune in, and drop out, right? Or about escape and getting away from the structures that weren't serving them. Our movement, this recent movement, iteration of that expression is more about connection connecting to ourselves, connecting to our local uh, community, our global community, and the rest of the natural world. So do that part, Turn, tune on to yourself, tune in, and then drop in, and that's what this talk is about today. So if you want to change the world, start by changing yourself. Like I said, a lot of people said this. Change your thoughts and change your world. If you're a, a positive power of a positive thinking person, you're onto this stuff. I go in dark, well, there we go. All that, all that we are is a result of our thoughts. So now, like Biggie started, he told us there that if we go back and change the world, we change ourselves first, and that's the path we're gonna start with today, right? What we think we become, be the energy you want to attract. Energy flows where attention goes. These are all super familiar bumper sticker wisdom sayings. Thoughts will manifest, thoughts become things. We hear this stuff all the time. It's perfect, it's beautiful, it's not the whole story. So we're gonna flesh that out. Right? Your thoughts create your life. You believe, believe you deserve it and the universe will serve it. Right? The catcher, the better. You are what you believe yourself to be. Okay, so Gandhi had a strategy. If we all are our thoughts, if our thoughts become our actions, he broke it down like this. Beliefs become thoughts, thoughts become words, words become actions, well, actions become habits, habits become values, values become your destiny. Right? So there's a clear thinking. So how do we get from here to there? How do we get... Uh, our ideas to manifest in the world is through through a series of steps, right? From changing our beliefs, changing our thoughts. So it turns out we got about fifty to seventy thousand thoughts running through the monkey mind a day. Can you believe that? Fifty to seventy thousand, right? So this is going to happen, just like the the heart beats and the lungs breathe, the mind thinks, right? So we don't attach to all of them. We can't afford to. We don't. We don't have the mental capacity. What we do attach to a lot of times is our beliefs, right? And so our beliefs are generally um, things that are true to us, but not, might not actually be true. But they're things that we glean from our thoughts and say, this is something I believe. And these are malleable. These are things that can be changed through uh, inquiry, through testimony, through experiences. Our beliefs can change. So we change our beliefs, and we can change our thoughts, and we can change the whole pattern, right? So the design process. I went to school for, my formal degree is in industrial design, and I was blessed to uh, learn from a whole systems thinker, a somewhat complicated but very linear, linear and beautiful uh, process of uh, designing things, of taking things from thought into realization. So I worked with that for a number of years. And then I went into public art, and I worked with communities, and I realized we gotta simplify this, but there's some stuff that we can use from this, right? After that, I worked with um, social services, and they had this uh, with the kids, this challenge day, be the change, notice, choose, act. This was a clear, uh, super simplified version of cha the change process. Notice what's not working, choose a course of action, and act on it. 
right? Everybody knows no to serve, so we get stuck in that. It's the complaining, the, the <laughs> it's, it's a blessing and a curse, right? The beautiful part about noticing is it lets us know what's not working, and it lets us know when we need to go into the choosing and, and research some options and then mention the action. The process that I'm going to share today is flushed out a little bit more than this, but more simplified than what I learned, and I hope it helps you. So that's a little bit about me. I've used this um, to make gardens. I've used this to create a project that I started in Thailand and a project I did here at the Permaculture Foundation of Hawaii. Um, I've used this to uh, to help uh, young people find their, uh, their calling. Um, I've gotten it broken down where you can pretty much translate it into whatever uh, project you're working on, right? But for today, we're gonna talk about purpose. It could be a garden. I might even toggle between gardens sometimes just so you can see the, the, the fullness of this, right? But we're gonna talk about purpose because <laughs> why not? And <laughs> it's a big deal, you know? Like it's, it's uh, we'll get into that, but it, it's, it's worth considering, it's worth your time. So I appreciate you guys showing up today for that. All right, got purpose. They say if you have a pulse, you have purpose. So it doesn't have to be this overwhelming, what is the one thing I'm meant to do with my life. It can be purpose in the day, it can be purpose in the week. But we're gonna talk about higher purpose. We're gonna talk about that calling, that voice that asks us to show up. All right, purpose, the reason for which something is done to create or for which something exists, right? That's you, you're here for a reason. Whether that's raising children, or you know traveling the planet or crocheting uh, a sweater or what you know <laughs> you have a purpose and so let's let's acknowledge that and then let's engage with that energy flows where attention goes find your purpose so here's the why how and what these are all important questions to ask when looking to navigate your purpose why am i here is a question that we're continually asking ourselves over and over again for our life from millennials to boomers it doesn't stop because it's always changing, because we're always changing. So, uh, Mark Twain said the two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find your, out why, and probably the first time you find out why. Because there's this clarity, right? There's this, uh, the, the blockages move out of the way, there's a reason to get out of bed. Um, the Blue Zone people were just in town, and they said that one of the things that centennials, people that live over 100 have in common, is they wake up every day with a sense of purpose. There's a reason for them to get out of bed, right? Uh, but Mr. Fuller went so far as to say, if you find your purpose, not only are you going to be more lucrative because you're going to be uh, uh, excited about it, um, but you're going to be more useful because you'll probably geek out on it and go into it a lot deeper. Um, but the universe and the planet and your friends and family are going to—they're uh, going to encourage that because it's going to benefit them. If it's your higher purpose, we're not talking about vocation as much. You can toggle that in and out and we'll get into that. So find out why, why your purpose. People don't ask that question, the why so much, right? They're like, I'm supposed to make gardens, why? Hmm, and some stuff's gonna open up around that, right? So find out the why, what is your why? That's your question regarding purpose. The purpose of life is to live a life of purpose. Live on purpose and make it happen. All right, so it could be easy as helping people plus your talents, that could be your purpose. I'm not here to tell you how to figure that out. I'll show you some cool diagrams. Here's a simple one. Find your gifts, share your gifts. That's your purpose. Easy peasy, right? Get a little bit more complicated here. Something you love, plus what the world needs, plus what you can get paid for, make some abundance for, get your basic needs met, and what you're great at. And from those four uh, questions, you're gonna find your passion, mission, vocation, and profession start to emerge. Once you get knee deep in that situation, hopefully some glowing light of purpose begins to emerge, right? This is the idea. I like this Venn diagram because, well, I just like Venn diagrams in general, but this guy added another bubble, uh, your experience, right? So your nurture, that has a lot to do with it. It wasn't in the previous diagram. So I invite you to make your own diagram, how to figure out your purpose. Um, what is it that you find yourself doing? What are you noticing? What do you like? These kind of things. Collect your thoughts around that. But we're gonna go through a process today that's gonna help you flesh that out. It's gonna help you, how do I find my purpose? How to manifest your vision. It's pretty much the, the uh, foundational vision for this talk. It's the how to manifest your vision. I think when we're young, uh, they give you a piece
piece of paper or some clay and they say make something. I'm like, God, I don't know how to do what to make, or an uh, empty canvas, they paint something, right? It can seem a little bit overwhelming, analysis, paralysis, fear, stuff like that can get in your way. You know, I had a close friend that was a mural painter, and she would make these 30 foot long uh, murals, and people would see them and they're just blown away. They're like, couldn't conceive, how did you do that, right? Well, I saw how she did that. She drew it on a piece of paper, she scanned it in, she projected, she did the back layer, the front layer, all the way to the front until she rendered it, and it was done, and there was a process. And she had that demystified, and it was like magic to other people. So for finding your purpose, or for making a garden, there's a process. There's a way that you can take yourself through that. That's here, seven steps from idealization to realization, or how to manifest your intention for the manifest container. Um, oh, I want to talk about that real quick, just the, the connection with the manifest. Mana, as I know it, is life force energy, right? It's like what radiates and everything. But specifically, it's the stuff on the fringe. It's the transformal cells that are like emerging. It's your life force energy that is like pushing and pulsating towards its fullness, right? And that's why mana was so um, desired and so appreciated. Fest, as I interpret it, festing is action, right? So we can say spirit in action, spirit in action. Van Jones says, the future of humanity lies in the spiritual people becoming active and the active people becoming spiritual. So we've got to get some feet up under them prayers. And so I'm constantly coming back to those two connections, spirit and action, spirit and action, manifest, manifest, manifest. Oh, let's go back one. So we got seven steps here. Statement of intention, idea generation, visualization, contextualization, presentation, specification, finalization. So we're going to go into it. Statement of intention. So they say, if you want to manifest something, you need a clear intention, right? That's awesome. And that's about as far as that instruction goes from certain groups of people, right? So if you can dive into this wisdom, you're going to find that there's people talking about what exactly that means. And I'm going to share with you a version of that today. Statement of intention. Notice and observe the situation. What's actually happening? Free of judgment or opinions. The witness, right? Then identify what you discover to be the situation and list adjectives that describe your findings, your core beliefs, needs, and values as they apply accordingly. If I'm going to make a garden, I'm going to go out into nature and I'm going to sit with it. First step in the design process in permaculture is observation. Without judgment, without knowing, I'm just going to sit and I'm going to witness and I'm going to see what's working, I'm going to see where the challenges are. I'm going to write these things down. <laughs> if I want to go deeper into it, I'm going to start examining the soil with the soil food web and a microscope that can really geek out and go all the way down the rabbit hole, which we'll do a little bit around people today. So um, you're just going to notice it. And then you're going to uh, use a character. Um, all these processes have a character, right? So Big Mind and uh, Playback Theater taught us if we embody something, we can kind of get into that a little bit. So for statement of, the, of intention, the character, this is going to make sense in a second, but the character we're going to use is clear and non-reactive. Your higher self's ideology combined with your base desires to get a full spectrum of your center of gravity. We're going to use this character to access our brain to find out what's important to us and what we need. Both, let, we're going to let both these voices be heard equally. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, and the takeaway from this is a fuller understanding of the situation with a clear statement of intention, what is important to you, what you're needing. What we're going to do here, we're going to look at under the water. We're going to look at our shadows. We're going to look at what are, what's driving us, some of the stuff that happened when we were younger, some of the stuff that we feel excited or compelled to, to, to look into. We're going to look at the fullness of who we are, just like we would of the natural system if we're making a garden. We're going to look at our fullness and we're going to get a better idea of what we're dealing with, right? We're going to try to be objective. So this is a simple Venn diagram that says a person is made up of three different parts. you got your IQ, your EQ, and your personality. No problem. Yeah, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. But this is where we're going to start. Your IQ is your uh, measurable intelligence. EQ is your emotional intelligence. Personality is you. All right. If we just go to intelligent types, there's nine different intelligent types. We got musical intelligence, kinesthetic intelligence, natural intelligence. So there, right alone, that bubble just got a lot bigger. <laughs> and it's good that we learn that about ourselves. Like, where's our center of gravity? What, what is our intelligence? What drives us? Right? And I'm going to go kind of quick through these, but I'll post these 
online so you can get some of them. So your rational brain and your limbic, limbic brain together is going to kind of give you a, a sense of your emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence, left and right working together, right? So emotional intelligence, that was, uh, those nine were uh, regular intelligences, emotional intelligence, there's five different kind of centers of gravity people have around that. You want to find that out about yourself. You want to know as much as you can. If you're going to be manifesting your purpose, if you're going to be dealing with yourself, you want to know thyself. Know thyself is a super important thing. And there's a lot of systems out there that have been updated, and we'll talk about some of them, to help us do that. We got the love languages, five love languages. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but this is super great information. Helps you learn where your center of gravity is, where your partners and your friends are, and how you can show love and receive love appropriately, right? These are things that you can understand about yourself. So we got the old school stuff. We got Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We got Claire Graves and Spiral Dynamics, or Don Beck and Spiral Dynamics, Claire Graves and the level of psychological existence. This is a way to look at things. Hierarchy of needs applies, although I know plenty of people that have self-actualized and they're pretty shaky in some of these departments. So this is possible. We can turn this out, we can flip it, but we want to consider it. We want to give a nod to the masters who helped us with the self-actualization movement. It wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for stuff like this. Spiral dynamics is Ken Wilber's work. Looks complicated because it is, but it helps you <laughs> figure out aspects of yourself. Where are you at in your development? What's your line and your levels and your states and stages? This is a way that you can understand yourself. If you're a Virgo, if you're super geeky, if you like to go heavy into stuff, this one's for you. But there's other ones. Okay, so what else do we know about nature versus nurture? That's old school thinking. It's both, right? It's nature and nurture. Together, nature is going to give us our uh, qualities we're born with, which we'll talk about more. Nurture is going to give us past experiences, religion, family values, social influences, upbringing. These things form our beliefs. So if we change some of these things, we can change some of our beliefs. If we look at some of them, we just shine light in the darkness of some of those things, we can better understand them. So there's lots of ways. The Four Corners, this is a beautiful, uh, the Four Directions, sorry, of the, the Native people. This is beautiful. It's kind of an XY axis. And what you do, if, if you look at this, you'll find yourself located on here somewhere. And that was so you can know who you are, but it's also so you can know what you're not. The idea is that if you want, if you need to, in certain situations, pull yourself towards center so you're a balanced, whole individual. And you're also embracing your unique differences. Going way back, God knows when, we got the system of astrology in this uh, downloaded. It was a time when people spend time with other people <laughs> and when they spend time with the stars. Well, the archetypes, right? These are the, the pantheon of, of gods from, and goddesses from the Roman times. These uh, essentially are um, superheroes. They're superheroes, right? We have modern day mythology, or they're Smurfs, or they're Care Bears, or any time that we use archetypes to help communicate to each other, right? We, can, we see astrology and psychology kind of mixing together. Um, there's a lot, you know, there's, so there's 16 different things in the Meyer Briggs. We see some commonalities. No one's reinventing the wheel here. We're just like updating it, adjusting it. We have um, different types idealistic, guardian, rational, artesian, and within that, we have wings. And these are ways that we can better understand. Know ourselves so we can find our purpose on the path, just to get back to where we were. All right, so astrology sort of uh, updated with the Enneagram, if anyone's heard of that. It's, um, there's <coughs> nine, uh, nine characters in the Enneagram. It's very much connected with astrology that uses nine planets, and it's just a modern interpretation of it. One that may uh, be easier for people to digest. There's nine types. I'm a four down there. And so, right, the two is the helper. And what we find out about the helper is their drive and motivation is to feel loved, search for intimacy, and fear of disconnection. Oh, no, we don't talk about the shadows too much, right? But we need to. We need to understand what our fears are, what our motivations are, what drives us, if we're going to fully understand ourselves, right? So, I'm, like I said, I'm a four. I'll just be super vulnerable here. Fear of having no significance. We'll want to know why they need to do something. Avoidance of the mundane, right? So... This is a really accessible way to know yourself with the Enneagram. Um, there's wings, so there's nine sections, but then there's wings. And so you get to know yourself. And um, like I said, I'll put this stuff online. You can look it up yourself, I hope. I think Enneagram for the, uh, the modern day seeker is a great way to, to engage. All right, so that was the 
uh, western side of things with astrology. You know, 100th monkey, now we're in the eastern side and we got the I Ching. And about the same time these things are coming to fruition. The I Ching, uh, if, I don't know if you're familiar, then they, they find some associations with the chakra system to simplify it for people because we're now we're in the Eastern traditions, right? And so they, you know, they, they're, they're mixing and matching and making things happen. And it's, it's a complicated system, but it really helps you know yourself. And then we take the chakras and we see some connection there between the Kabbalah and, and how that helps you understand yourself. Kabbalah, then we see some connections with modern day uh, uh, human design right so that's another system to help us understand ourselves so these are all systems to help us understand ourselves the idea here is to find one that resonates with you if you're skeptical if you're calling bs on it if it doesn't fit that's not your system move on to the next system find a way to figure out who you are all of who you are look into it just like if you were evaluating a soil in a garden right that's the idea gene keys i think is one of the most progressive cutting edge ways of doing this it takes everything we know from astrology, everything we know from I Ching and, and um, human potential or uh, human design. It puts it all together. It's amazing work. This guy channeled it through, and I'm telling you, it'll transform your life. Because it's a rabbit hole, man. Like, find out about yourself is like you can just go and go and go, and you can just dig and dig and dig, and you can just be stuck there. And it's beautiful. And do that for a while, but come out. Come out and continue the process. Come out and help the others, right? right, right the yes. hippies, right? They said, tune in to yourself, tap outside, but then come back, come back, come yeah. back. And yeah, it's a beautiful sure. start. But this is the biggest uh, pitfall of self-observation is that it can get a little bit addictive. <coughs> because the more you know, the more things open up, the more yeah. you start to see patterns, the more clarity yeah. happens, right? So come out. Because why? Because your core beliefs rule your emotions, and we're trying to figure that out so we can change things in the here and now. Some of our most common core beliefs, I'm not good enough, I don't deserve it, I'm unworthy, I suck, all that stuff. So we want, if you don't have programming, this stuff's going to creep in, right? right? So you need programming to switch your core beliefs so you can then begin to manifest a life that's yeah. good for you. Your core values, the way to do that. We're gonna get in some actual hands-on. This is usually like a two or three hour thing, so forgive that. But, um, so if you have a, a whiteboard or just some free writing, you can start getting in touch with what your core beliefs are and your core values and what your needs are. And the game is, you're gonna take on this character, this like higher self character that knows better, knows everything. Don't even tell me anything different, right? This is your higher self and you're gonna say, what's important to me is, in regards to either the garden or, or your personal development or your higher purpose. What's important to me is, write that down, what's important to me is, and say it out loud, what's important to me is that's sustainable, what's important to me that's beautiful, what's important to me is that it's magical, what's important to me that it's meaningful. Like, find out what's important to you. What are your higher values? And then you're gonna know your beliefs a little bit from observation. And then your core, your little kid, like, I want ice cream and I want it now, right? That character is gonna come out. That playful character, and get into that character, stomp around, and be that character. And like, I wanna be happy, and I want a partner, and I want something that matters, and let that voice be heard, because we don't often give it a chance, right? So we're gonna call in our higher selves, everything that knows what better, we're gonna call in our needy egoic selves, right? And we're gonna list these things, and we're gonna have a whole bunch of adjectives written down. And with those adjectives, we're gonna create a mission statement or a vision statement or a statement of intention it could be a paragraph or a couple sentences but it or it could be a whole short story whatever it's up to you but it's gonna be from all this observation about who you are what you discovered about yourself you're gonna write down your observations about that and that is gonna help you check your map in the future if you get veered off track you're gonna go back and say wow this was important to me and these are my core beliefs and this is what I need and I need to stay true to that because I was true to myself and that character that time and those words matter those words are who I am right okay that's stage one we're gonna go faster through this I got caught up in the rabbit hole of know thyself because I think that's super uh, awesome and I think other people do too the rest is gonna go quicker okay idea generation <laughs> using specific techniques to explore your creative self fully flush out your inner landscape and birth the first steps towards your end goal without editing, questioning, or evaluating. 
This can be very divergent and expansive to allow for new insights to enter. This is playful. Be creative in whatever way works for you. This is the time for that. The adult self will come in later and it'll help you navigate reality. Right now, be playful, right? And dream. And dream. There's plenty of room for that later. Character enter. Let that be, let the, this be, be a no worries um, and just go for it. So the takeaway is fully express fractal, fully express fractal map of your interiors with pictures and colors that resonate with your personality. Include multiple interconnections and unanswered questions. I'm good. All right, so ideas. Where do those ideas come from, right? When we're sitting in the creative process, we smoked a little ganja, we went for a walk, we're swimming in the ocean, we're dancing, whatever. We're making space for downloads to come in. Where do those come from? So the idea that you can catch ideas, right? They're not yours. They exist in the new sphere and you just need to pluck them out. And sometimes you get little bits at a time and sometimes big ideas are a lot of little ideas. You can get to those through free writing, through journaling, through just letting anything that come out, come out. Use your the right side of your brain by using your left hand or your opposite hand, using big colors, right? Like, just play, get to the end of it. Brainstorm is like a list of ideas where you're just gonna go through this, 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 this. And then what we're gonna do is take all these different ideas and we're gonna begin to connect them together, right? And, um, and we're gonna try to navigate our interiors. Just like our brain has nodes and pathways and interconnection, a mind map is a tool that's gonna help us take the, the aspect of our brain and put into the visual, right? So what we're gonna do is put something in the middle that matters to us, this is this person's values. These will probably have been brainstormed where we list them down. And then we're gonna begin to list onto that and then onto that and then onto that. And it's gonna build. And the, the idea is that you don't have uh, easy app, uh, uh, connection with like the ends of your neurological system. You have to link to it. You have to jump to it. And if you do this with other people, you can jump even bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's hard to get way back to when you were four, that thing that happened with the wagon that one time. I think you know what I'm talking about, right? It's hard to get there unless you just like take the steps towards my father and then there's that ice cream and whatever, right? So we want to link to that. And the idea, the mind maps can be beautiful. It's an amazing technique. Aristotle used it. Leonardo da Vinci used it. It's been used by great thinkers for a long time. It's a way to visually represent the, the full capacity of a thought. And like I said, there's no editing. It's just, what about this? What about that? If you don't have zip line on there somewhere, you're not doing it right. Like it's playful, right? It's like water slide. It's fun. You can edit it later. Let this be expansive. So if we go back to higher purpose, you put yourself in the middle. These are some things that were important to this person. They wanted more exercise, more brain capacity, meditation, play, visualization. And they begin to flush that out. And let the characters revisit this. Let your like happy engaged self visit this. Come back to it when you're angry and be like, ah, I don't wanna do that. And come back to it when you're like really inspired. Like let the fullness of who you are engage with this map that's gonna determine your future when it comes to higher purpose. This is a, uh, a series, each one of these are about four foot by four foot. And we did this for uh, a local project called The Hive to flush out the idea of The Hive. So we were able to do a very complex, each one of these was a center, but it's all connected. We were able to visualize a very complex idea, a big system by doing individual mind maps and then putting them together. So you can do this on the computer right but it's less it's less like exciting really like it's more it's to do it with pen and paper get some big paper out get some friends or if it's just you and just let it be more creative but if you want to take that and put it into a computer program feel free there are some out there that are fun all right music when it comes to creativity super important right jazz is great for free form expression uh, classical is good for editing, whatever works for you. But let that be part of it. Let the aromatherapy come into the room. Be in a space that's creative to you. We're gonna move forward. This is step three, visualization. This one's awesome. All right, use your statement of intention and your mind map. So you got statement of intention and your mind map. You got two uh, projects for your portfolio about who you are. Begin to merge your ideas into visual form. Let images represent ideas without too much specification. Allow mood and feeling to be part of the expression. The character here, aspects of your emotional instinctual self. 
Allow yourself the opportunity to visually interpret your heart's desire and open up to subtle forms of communication that speak to you without words. We're gonna keep this in the heart space, right? And the takeaway here is a visual representation that communicates the fullness of your statement of intention and the expansiveness of your mind map, those two products, with feeling and personality mixed in. Visualization. So, yantras, people have been using these as magical symbols for a long time, right? And whatever you want to uh, put meaning to the yantra is what will work. This is a Sri yantra. Um, we also use mudras and, and mantras and things like that, but we're talking about visualization right now. So, Sri yantra is something that some people meditate on every day, right? And it, it, it communicates something to them. And it doesn't actually matter what the image is, as long as there's meaning for you, then it becomes a magical symbol, right? Um, this is an example of schedules, Alistair Crowley talked about it, where you take words and you combine them into like sort of images, like this could be like love thy neighbor and you took out the vowels and you put it, made it into a picture and then you tattoo it on your hand and you look at it every day and it reminds you. These magical symbols have been useful a long time for people to help them manifest their intentions, right? Here's some other examples of that. Our altars are like visual visual boards for manifestation. We often put things that matter to us. Shiva may remind me to be present, to be still and non-reactive. You know, there's going to be things I'm going to put on my altar that are going to have meaning for me, whether it's characters of people that I want to call in, whether it's colors that feel good for me. We do this all the time. Whoever created this space did this. We begin to like create our reality, right? in our physical reality because we know it influences our thoughts and we know it influences who we are, right? So some people do their whole house, right? <laughs> and the altars get bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, so vision boards, old school way of doing it. Nothing wrong with it. If you're crafting, you got this shit at home, not a lot of people do, right? Blues and the tapes and stuff, piles of newspapers or magazines. But that's one way to do it. I know people that cut out dolphins and rainbows and put that together, put that on their front door. When they left in the morning, they saw it every day. Six months later, they're living in Hawaii, right? So these are powerful systems of manifestation. The power of positive thinking people know that. The intent of the secret people know that, right? So, so it can be really simple. It's, as long as it matters to you, as long as it, it means something, right? You can just cut and paste and have fun with it. You can get quite... Uh, uh, creative with it. It's it's your symbol. It's your your portfolio piece. It matters to you, right? But nowadays we have Pinterest, so that's super cool. A lot less glue and magazine. Who has magazines? Not very many people anymore. So Pinterest. So as you get a Pinterest account, you surf around the internet. You're like, I like that. I like that. I like that. Your subconscious is mapping itself. I like that. I like that. You can go on Google Image and you can just type in awesome, and awesome comes up, and it helps you understand what kind of awesome you're looking for, right? And that's a way, really quickly, you can um, navigate your interiors and you can begin to put visions, moods, feelings, vibes into what you're talking about, right? And then, you know, you can uh, put it into Word or Photoshop or, you know, you can just write on it, print it out, write on it. It's finding a, a work zone that feels good for you, a place where you can, can dream and you can be and you can surrender and you can be creative. And so I found this picture of an office desk. That looks nice. That's not really like what I'm talking about. Like, oh, okay, that's a little bit better, right? So since I'm flipping through office space on Google Image, I'm like, oh, screw that one. That one's way better, right? And I was like, no, that's not really actually what I'm talking about at all. That's what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> and so I was able to get there because I navigated my, my intuition through the visual quickly. So this is fast. This is like, this is happening fast. You don't have to think about it. You feel about it. Right? And you want the colors and you want the mood. I might actually not want to work in that. I'd probably end up messing up my back. But that's not the idea. <laughs> the idea is that it, it feels good. So I'm talking about, oh, and that feels better. What if I worked in there, right? Like, <laughs> looking at that, right? Like, that's what I want to do. I want to influence myself to feelings when it comes to making these vision boards um, or these dream boards or these whatever you want to call them. Right? You want to allow yourself to get into the character. You want to allow yourself, remember this is playful, you want to dream, you want to daydream. Remember when we used to do that, when we used to daydream, when we would like fly to Mars to pick mangoes on a rocket ship, remember those days, anyone? Anyone will go home, man. Right, 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 right. So get into that, get into that, get into that consciously if you can. Get into that and allow yourself to imagine and to be 
playful and let your visual visual literacy communicate your internal playful self so dream dream about it but guess what now you can dream about it uh, digitally because there's mind movies right so you can take all these images you collected together this is a, an actual app that you can get called mind movie and they'll put which we started this with and I'll end with one where they put it into a beautiful way so I met another lady that came to Hawaii she watches every day for eight months her mind movie about Hawaii she sent them images they made her this movie she sent the images that mattered to her she watches every day she reprogrammed her brain right so she could manifest her intention and that's what we're doing. We're hacking life, right? We're like figuring out how we can get in there, right? Mind movies. All right, next stage, contextualization. What the heck does that mean? Look around and discover what the others are doing. Gain inspiration from their journey and realize how your unique, your unique expression is connected to the larger conversation. Check out possibilities and people who inspire you globally and locally, then contact them. The character, curious and intuitive investigator. Be critical, but also open-minded too. Let your aspirations and excitement influence this journey. Find people who you respect, living their higher purpose and mission with integrity. Find the others. Take away new inspirational influences and friends, hopefully, with a better understanding of how they got to where they are. Contact information, websites, and books from organizations that you find to be exciting, motivational to push and support you. Contextualization means bring this into to now, into what's happening globally and locally, right? Find the others. Find the others. There's others like you, or there's others that are close to you, or they're navigating close to you. You're as unique as we think we all are, there's people that we resonate with. And even if they're totally opposite than us, they're the people that we might want to collaborate with because they're the ones that are going to help bring our dream to fruition, right? So a design team is diverse, just like it meant your interiors are diverse, right? Find the others. So as a light worker, you want to raise your own vibration, then you want to come back and share that with others. This is a bit of a convoluted map, but what it shows us is different areas that we can engage with. Now, the Thrive people broke it down, and we're going to use this one. So there's 12 different sectors, health, infrastructure, justice, media. This can sound super square. I'm not talking necessarily about your vocation. I'm talking about your higher purpose. So within that 12, there's chances are you resonate with some of that or multiple aspects of that. We're gonna try to identify a center of gravity for us. We're contextualizing now, right? We have a really clear image of who we are, what our vision is, what we wanna do. And now we're seeing where that applies to the greater world. Because remember on our purpose, what does the world need is part of the conversation. And if you remember from the we me meditation in the beginning, the we is part of the conversation, right? It's, it's cyclical. So it's just not about you. You wanna find out how that uh, is uh, connects with other people. So those 12 are the arts, economics, education, environment, government, health, infrastructure, justice, media, relations, science, spirituality. All those things have subcategories under them. Chances are you can find your center of gravity in there somewhere. What keeps you up at night is your fight. So if you need help to try to like navigate your intuition to help with your uh, where your center of gravity is, listen to your intuition. See where you go, see where you're drawn to, see what people you respect, see what's going on out there that gets your attention. All right, so the inner part of that, what, um, of that circle was three specific areas. Immediate change, systemic change, and conscious, consciousness shift. All right, so immediate change. This is direct action, urgent, things that need uh, immediate attention, right? Often described as best practices. These are our social norms, right? So helping out uh, friends and family, uh, the elderly, uh, feeding polar bears or the homeless, uh, the marsh that's happening today in Hilo. This is direct action. This is immediate change. You're, this is uh, the DAPL pipeline. This is, oh shit, all hands on deck. We need to do something right now. Civil disobedience. Uh, the Earth's birth direct action manual. This can go, you know, as far down that rabbit hole as you want. If that dam is in the way, then someone's got to do something about it, right? So <laughs> this is systemic, this is direct action. But what some people will say, success isn't always an immediate change. You never change something by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing reality obsolete. So some people will say direct action is beautiful, but if we really want to change stuff, we need to change it systemically. We need to change it from its core. We need to change it long term, right? What I find, without judgment, 
is my teenage 20 year self was more in the flow of immediate direct action. And as I start to get older, I find myself grading with system change and changing the center of gravity of the culture. And then the final one is worldview shift where elders show up and help us see what the lessons that they learned. So same old thinking, same old results. So we need to change the system. So we wanna shift our vibration into more holistic thinking. So finding out on this outer ring where your center of gravity is with those 12, and then finding out where you fit in. Where's your center of gravity when it comes to, am I an immediate needs person? Maybe when it comes to health, I am. When it comes to systemic change, ma'am, I'm all for education. If you find yourself on this wheel, you can understand where you are, and you can take your passion, and you can engage it with the world. And you can find a way to support that feels good for you. All right, People, Planet, Profit is uh, a systemic change that's happening on our planet right now. Permaculture is a systemic change that's happening on our planet right now. The fringe stuff where people are looking at things differently. Before it was just like, screw all of those, just this, right? <laughs> and now people are saying, hey, you know, there's conscious commerce, there's sacred commerce, there's ways of looking things where we can do right by the planet and we can do right by the people and we can also uh, make profit for ourselves. And we can find balance in that. We can look at those. That's a systemic change. That's changing the world that we live in. That's not how business was done before. So purpose, culture, stakeholder, and leadership, all these things are part of conscious commerce, um, people, planet, profit, part of sacred commerce. Uh, Cafe Gratitude is a good example. I bet you can think of other great examples of people that are leading the forefront and how we can build a new way to walk on this earth in a Pono way and also in a way that uh, fills our needs for abundance and purpose. So that's immediate uh, needs, the systemic change, now consciousness shift. And that's a whole, that's a worldview shift. That's a whole different way of looking at things, right? That's sometimes it's even hard to, to, to say what that is because we don't know, just like four or five, six D realities. So it's a paradigm shift, right? And so if you're vibrating at that level where you're ready to call a new paradigm, for one, you better pack a lunch. And for two, thank you. And three, <laughs> You know, like, good luck trying to help people see that because that's a whole shifting reality. That's a whole shifting reality. It's a big thing. And when you're ready for that, show up for that. Most people I talk to are in either in immediate needs or systemic change. All right, so it's a total different reality. Go ahead. Paradigm shift to change from one way of thinking to another. Sounds easy, not so much. Breaking down those walls, those, those borders that are in our way. So some of the things that have got to be changed for the new paradigm, organizational structure, control systems, stores and mythology, power structures, rituals and routines, symbols and artifacts. This festival and festivals like it are helping shift the paradigm, right? How we communicate with each other consciously are helping shift the paradigm, right? How we show up with integrity as our strong masculine in honor of the feminine is shifting a paradigm, right? A very real paradigm that is with us still and has been with us for a long time, right? An example of a paradigm shift is from late 1700s, late 1800s, uh, slavery, uh, at least the formal version of it, was eradicated on this planet. There was a paradigm shift in reality in humanity where they said, no more, we're not playing this game no more. It took 100 years, all right? So that's how paradigm shifts work. But it starts with people really dreaming big and showing up. All right, so that's the wheel. Find yourself on it. Find where you are within those three things. Identify what circle you are. And then we're contextualizing, right? So we're finding the others and we're gonna reach out to them and we're gonna contact them. And we're gonna email them. We're gonna tell them we think they're awesome. And they're gonna be happy that an other found them. And we're gonna connect in with, the, with, with what's happening, right? We're gonna have a Rolodex. We're gonna have books. We're gonna have websites uh, bookmarked. We're gonna reach out, we're gonna to talk to them, we're gonna have a support system, right? Uh, all right, so real quick, we've done statement of intention. Remember that's values and needs, things like that. Idea generation, that's the mind map, right? Uh, visualization, dream boards or mind movie. Contextualization, find the others, right? And see where you are on that map and, and then reach out. Presentation. Collect your four polished portfolio pieces, the four I just mentioned from the process, streamline it to be able to communicate it to other people who you trust will reflect back to you honestly. Revisit and integrate feedback accordingly. Being vulnerable and authentic with other people, you 
to respect and appreciate help shape your direction through your ability to receive feedback and listen and integrate what is necessary. That's the character here. Your takeaway, your complete package of information along with some authentic connections and a support system. You've got some new friends now because you're, you're, you're finding people to connect with that have a similar vibration. Uh, hopefully some honest and pointed feedback regarding direction and completion of your project and newly illuminated aspect. Strength but grace, right? Humble but proud, right? This is what we want to do and we want to present. We want to get up in front of our friends and we want to be authentic with them. We don't want to we don't want to hide it too much behind mirror, behind sheets, right? We want to we want people to be able to read us so they can mirror back to us. So if we kind of stumble over something, they might say, hey, I noticed you were so into that. We got from Jazz about that. We want honest reflection. Alright, so presentation <laughs> it might not look like this, but it'll probably more look like that. Right? So we want to put all our stuff together, right? All those process, and then we want to find people in our community that were able to hold space for us. That um, maybe even people that uh, that we trust that are going to be super authentic with us, not blow a bunch of smoke up around, but tell us really what they think. Be like, well, you know, I heard people want to do that before, and they stumbled over this or whatever, and we're going to be vulnerable. We're going to find people that make us nervous, elders, right? That's what the, they got wisdom, and they can give back to us. They can reflect back to us. And they can help us. Just the, the the mental thought of I'm gonna present my life's purpose to these elders who are super busy and don't got time for you know me possibly. And like that reflection alone is gonna help you get your your uh, T's crossing your eyes dotted and it's gonna get it together. All right, so your friends are fine. Share it with your friends. Practice with your friends. You know, go spend time with them. Even start a club or something. Come together a purpose club or a manifestation club. But when it comes to the presentation, let it be people that like make your heart flutter a little bit. Okay, so the rule about this is be an integrity, right? So we don't want we don't want a sugar coat. And are you teachable, right? Are you able to receive the feedback? Can you surrender? Open your mind, learn to grow. The more you listen, the more you know. Uh, old ways won't open up new doors. I can look at this every day, right? Like I need this lesson so bad. I think a lot of us do, right? If we're gonna like. This is who I am, this is what I have to offer, and take it or leave it. But that doesn't help the process, right? When I went to art school, the people that dug in were your friends. They're like, hey, your composition is whack, your cover is going to give me a headache, and like, you appreciate that. You can take it or leave it, but it helped you, right? So being honest with each other. Next thing, we're almost there, specification. So, time to make some organizational decisions. Use techniques to plan and address each stage of development and set forth an agenda for activating the idea fully make set goals if need be so this is our square reality your analytical organizational self the part of you that shows up and does not let you down bring in strong organizational mind to assist if need be to outsource support manage the situation accordingly begin with the end of mind this is backwards engineering so if we want if we know what the end goal is our higher purpose is um, we want to then engineer that backwards before I was here we set up before we set up we kicked a bunch of hippies out and cleaned up their bedding. Before we did that, we loaded up the truck and got here. Before that, they did the PowerPoint. Before that, they set up the tent. Before that, they planned where they're putting the tent. So you go, you engineer it backwards. And by doing that, you get a clear picture of what needs to be done, right? And now you see we're getting into like your square reality. We're getting into like organizational structuring. You got your planner book out. You got your phone out with some new app you got, right? Your, this is, this is the part of you, some of us, that needs to show up, right? Because all the dreaming and the thinking, we got, you know, that part's fun. But now we got to make this shit happen. We really got to get into it, right? And if we're going to do the garden, we got to figure out what needs to happen in an orderly way. If we're going to activate our higher purpose, we need to figure out what needs to happen to do that. So make our goal setting uh, accessible, right? And so uh, there's programs for this. Um, if you have this in you, you don't need this as much. If you don't have this in you, then ask for help. Uh, online tool that helps you track different levels of development in different parts of your life. It's really useful, it's easy to navigate. There's tools like this, there's hundreds of apps. You know, the personal growth industry is huge, right? So if you, are, are, if you identify through the know thyself aspect that you're missing something, now, you know, you can call that support in. Or you have a friend help you, if you got like a type A kind of friend that can help you. All right, we're almost done. Finalization, hit it. All right, bring it to fruition with 
with regular progress on each stage of the process. Follow your plan until completion. Adjust accordingly, but stay focused and trust your process. Don't diverge too much at this point. You just follow where you started. Keep up motivation. All right, so the character here is strong, committed, diligent, and adjustable if need be. Whatever works for you regarding project management to maintain levels of interest and passion. That part of you uh, that takes pride in following through to completion. This part is super important, right? We need to take the plan that we backwards engineered that came from all the powerful symbols of, of manifestation that we created, and then we need to activate that. The takeaway is pride and ownership with a sense of accomplishment, um, but there's too many benefits to mention here. It depends on your project and it depends on what you're calling in, but you can just imagine everything you pretty much dream in the beginning is starting to happen. Right, your full self is realized. So we can go ahead and celebrate. We can celebrate that we got to that level, right? Next slide. And we can celebrate, but not so fast. We still got a lot of work to do, right? So uh, this guy here, we can change the world. Yeah, but not sitting on your ass. You might need to put on some shoes too, right? At this stage, right? So this dreamer self that's sitting in the, in, what am I going to do? That's at the beginning, right? Now it's time to show up. Show up for the work every day. It's, you know, one foot in front of another, but sometimes it's guesses and sometimes it's leaps and sometimes it's trust. It's not as easy as you may think. You might have to keep pushing yourself and pushing yourself. You might need friends to help you push yourself. So dream it, plan it, work it, make it happen. Step by step, push, push, push. This is the part where you have to show up. You are the one that makes that happen. Uh, some people want it to happen. Some people wish it would happen. Others make it happen. This part of you, this character is the one that lights a fire under your ass. That's super important, okay? We let all the dreamers come. We let everyone have their say in this process, right? So no one should feel left out. We, you know, we invited in all the different characters, the pantheon of who we are to show up in this process. Now we need that one character that we often, some of us often uh, don't connect with, and that's the doer. And then when, at the end, wash, rinse, repeat, you know, revisit, revamp it whenever necessary. Go back and adjust parts of it. But mostly analysis paralysis gets us. Start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. Um, what's that Leonard Cohen, uh, forget your perfect offering, ring the bell, it still can ring, right? Uh, serotonin sings it too, right? Like, let that go, you know, like, that's awesome that that drove you when you were 20 or, or whatever, but just let that go and just do what you can. Engage with, with yourself, engage with the pro process, right? Hit it. So last bit, again, my name is Nico. Uh, I do Lower Puna Rising here locally, and it's an incubator hub. And what we do is try to take ideas and we try to bring them to this process and bring them into more fruition and then send them out to flourish. Um, there's a number of things we've worked on locally. And uh, if you want to contact me, if you, uh, personal development or a garden or anything like that, I'd love to help walk you through the process. I'll also be at Flow Fest. And, um, and then after that, I'll put this online because lots of information. Yeah. 10 a.m. So let's give it up for you guys. Thank Thanks you so much. Woo!